Welcome everyone to the first episode of Life on Purpose. This show is inspired by David's book, Purpose is the Only Choice. And it's going to be a prayerful session. And um, I'm glad you're with us. My guest today is Suzanne Sullivan, who I've known for several years. Suzanne is an elder in the, in the community and and she has devoted her life to extending the message of A Course in Miracles, a message of forgiveness and love to the world so that we would wake up in heaven that we've never left. So I'd like to welcome Suzanne. Mm. Thank you for joining me. Mm. You're very welcome. Thank you. I know that we <clears throat> spoke earlier and a couple of things that you mentioned was that you are being moved right now into a, a period of quietude and mysticism, devotion and purpose. Mm. Some of my favorite words, yes. <laughs> and I feel that that's what this is about. Mm. This will be what we share. Beautiful. Can you tell me, or tell us, share with us, really what your experience is now, and how you are... It feels like there's a shift going on. Mm. It feels like there's a, move, a movement toward <clears throat> deepening. Mm not only in this community, but really worldwide. It feels like the awakening has begun, mm. and that this is, this is your purpose. Mm. And this is what we're all being invited into. Yeah, beautiful. Um, well, I think it's a journey, um, it certainly has been for me. I like the idea of a park bench awakening, but that wasn't my experience. I had mystical experiences where the world fell away, but they didn't last. I always seemed to wake back up into the world where, of duality. And um, so there was a very, very deep prayer, since I was very young, really, about this world is not what it seems. It's There's something underneath, behind the curtain, so to speak. So I've, for many, many years, most of my life, I've been on a, a seeking path of what is behind that curtain. And so I think we can't at all negate the pathway, uh, but at a certain point, and I think perhaps this is what you're sensing, there's a dropping away of the seeking, and there's a finding that happens. And so I think it's, you know, if, if I have anything to share at all, it's just the encouragement of knowing that forgiveness works, that it's a very, very deep rabbit hole. Very deep. To let go of the self-concept, nobody really wants to do that. I certainly didn't even know what it meant. I had an idea that if I meditated long enough and just got past my monkey mind, I would, I would disappear. And that was sincere for me because of my mystical experiences I had had. But for some reason, as the Course says, you know, there's much unconscious guilt in the mind that we're not aware of at all. I certainly wasn't aware of it. I never felt like I was a guilty person. I had a pretty normal life, loving life, so to speak, but this call was deep, it kept pulling me, and so I kept just being open to what it meant when I kept hearing, you need to go deeper. And so, you know, uh, that's when <laughs> the Mighty Companion showed up, 
David Hofmeister, the clarity of his teachings, the extreme depth of his teachings, like nothing that I had ever experienced before, especially in the Course in Miracles community. And the Course, through lots of window shopping, was my steadfast. That's where I finally heard you have to make a choice. Stop shopping. Stop Mm. and buy. You know, get on a path. And so that's when David came in. And that's when my understanding of The Course in Miracles really started to take on a whole new realm, a whole new depth, a whole new uh, clarity, you know, and it was a non-compromising approach, which was new to me. And yet I knew that I was guided into that, into that um, place of depth with somebody who had walked before me, and so I was able to trust and walk through the absolute mess of the unconscious. (laughs) I had no idea. (laughs) I got to know what guilt was. I got to know what fear was. I got to know what terror was. I got to know what I wasn't, you know. And so I think Dan, that that's probably what you're sensing is like there's this shift that happens when when you go through this deep unwinding, which I feel just because it's my experience, that it's essential. It may not be essential in this particular genre for others, which is great. Of course, there are many, many pathways. But if you're listening in because you're attracted to the Course in Miracles, Jesus doesn't mince words, does he? No. It's pretty plain. It's like our handbook out of hell. So we have to do it, though, you see. We can't just keep studying it. We have to apply it. And when I was ready to apply it, that really apply it, I mean, I was applying it the best I knew how. But when I was really ready, then the, the teacher, so to speak, appeared. And, um, and I knew when I met David that, that it wasn't something outside of me. I knew it. It was like, oh, this is the symbol that's been called forward. And he pushed all my buttons, of course, you know. Once you seemingly leave your life and you focus entirely on this, if this is your calling, then, you know, where's the projection going to go? It's going to go on community. It's going to go on your who, who's in front of you, which is really beautiful in a way because you're safe in that. You know, you can trust that even though many, many moments of lack of trust, major. So for me, I feel uh, an amazing gratitude. I've been with David for 10 years. And um, yeah, just the depth of patience. I used to joke with people because we used to be called messengers of peace, right? And I would say, well, how do you know that we didn't need more attention than you do? You know, maybe (laughs) it goes so deep for us, we need to be right there in that glaring light all the time. Regardless, I have no idea why, but that that was the one that was given to me. And, And I feel now that he's my brother, and now there's this pull for silence for myself to to dwell within. Uh, but you can't skip steps, you know. It's like, that's why I think um, that's what I kept being shown, because I had an idea of what mysticism was. I had an idea it was like this, yeah. and you're sitting with candles and quiet atmosphere. And of course, in this community, we know there are many, 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 many projects where I was doing things for 12, 15, 16 hours a day without stopping. And the beauty of that is undoing the doer, undoing, undoing the, the, the self-concept of thinking that you know even what's best for you. Who wants to go there? Who wants to go there? Mm-hmm. Who wants to give up personal inspiration? That's very confusing to the ego. <laughs> I thought of this. It's a good idea. <laughs> Looks good to me. Looks really good, yeah. but it's a total, you know, what I'm, what I'm sharing is about the total giving up and giving over of the self-concept. 
And I've never met or been involved with a community that that's their purpose. And so however it looks for people, whether it's music or whether it's whatever, it could be anything, you know, that's the beauty of having a community like ours is that everybody gets to um, still do what it is that they feel inspired to do, but underneath it is there's only one purpose. Mm -hmm. Purpose is the only choice, the book that you're talking about. Right there. I read it and read it and read it. Yeah. Because there is only one choice. If you're really serious about awakening, that is. If you're not, there's billions of choices, yeah. seeming choices. Yeah. But it's uh, which illusion do you want, you know? I remember David talking about the other choices essentially <clears throat> aren't choices at all. Choices in the, in the illusion. Mm -hmm. One is no truer than the other. Mm -hmm. And actually, choice between illusion and, and truth isn't even a choice either. It's because illusion doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's really only truth. Mm -hmm. And so the awareness is dawning mm -hmm. on me mm -hmm. and everyone I live with. And yeah, I, I, my experience, I've been here a little over a year at La Casa, and my experience during this year has really been what does it feel like to lose your personal identity, mm. you know? And, and it, it was shocking, mm. you know, but it was like, every time, every time something would happen, I go, I'm, I'm a guy now without a, without a past. Mm. There's only now. Or I don't like the way my body is looking. Mm. You know, that was a strong part of my identity. And then it's like, can you let that go? Because that's not who you are. And, and mighty companions who I would talk to them about, oh, well, I can't do this or I can't do that because, you know, you're better at it than I am, which automatically separates us. Mm -hmm. But it is these concepts of like, oh, there's a hierarchy and, and I'm not quite good enough. And, mm -hmm. and then having them tell me, I'm not settling for smallness. Mm. You're a son of God. And so this is this is the answer to my prayer. Mm. Yeah, I know your prayer. You know, we uh, we recognize that prayer and I know when I first met you I recognized when we were in Sedona. I recognized your prayer, and it's like uh, it's it's the shared prayer of awakening. It's not a personal prayer. It's something that we can't actually control. Um, if I could have controlled it, I would have. I wouldn't. You know, Suzanne wouldn't have wanted to go through this. But there is such a deep calling in the heart, and and I think that that's what you were saying when we first started. Is that that the world is there's it seems to be happening like but. What's cool about that, Dan, is it's just you. You, you know, it's like so. They, mm. it's always been there. It's always been happening. But the more clear your mind gets, the more the the lens of perception gets wiped. Then then these symbols and these signs and these things that have always been there, but they've been covered up with our own self deception. Then they shine through, and you start to see them. It's almost like when you buy a new car, and then you see all those cars that are like your car. You know. It's the same thing. So it's, it's always happening right now. Yeah. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. And, and I'm so inspired about like, uh, the message of letting go of linear time, which is forgiveness. You know, that is what forgiveness is. And you say, I don't have a past. And that's a beautiful experience. And to speak from that place of, of somebody who actually has forgiven their past is a, a total present experience. Because then, then you're really... In, you're in connection with with everything you know and then you start to see through the through the process and I call it a process I know that's not very popular in non-dual terms but to me that's my experience that it has been a process 
process. It continues to be a deepening process. I never ever make proclamations. I could be on the floor tomorrow where I I forget that I'm dreaming. But it's so quick now, so quick, because there's been this deep um, dedication and, like Jesus says, a vigilance for the truth, not even knowing what the truth was, but having that support system, the scaffolding around me so that I could melt down all that which was impure. It's like alchemy, and then it changes into gold. And it's deep. It's very uh, profound. I mean, it's just a thought, right? It's But a thought believed in makes it feel like it has depth, and latitude, and everything. And, it's every, and then as you start to just chip away, and that's what's so beautiful about community, because you get to see what you believe right away, don't you? Yeah. Whatever I think about you, I think about myself. Whatever uh, any any sort of upset, any sort of contraction in the heart, any way, anything that's thinking, basically, you've bit the bait. And so I love forgiveness. It's, it, it is the only choice because it's the only uh, thought, still an illusion, yes, but it's the only one that will take you out of sleeping. The rest will take you deeper into dreaming. Yeah. Everything else will take you into dreaming, but forgiveness practiced in the way that we practice here, and, and it takes time, you know, it takes time to even know what the hell that means. Certainly did for me. I thought I was practicing forgiveness so well, I had no clue. But it was part of the stepping stones, and we hear David refer all the time to stepping stones. We hear about gentleness. Well, I was a cliff diver. I didn't, I didn't care about gentleness. Let's just go. And that was definitely reflected. It was like, it was not a sweet um, path for, for quite some time. Because my prayer was pure. My prayer was, let's, let's do this all the way, you know. And now there's a relaxation. There's like, oh, thank God, I don't have to do it like that anymore. And I don't think anybody really needs to do it any certain way that somebody else has done it. It's highly individualized, and I think that's the beauty of it is that the spirit will meet you where your mind is and all the beliefs that you have about awakening will be thrown up in your face as well so those can be dissolved you know so i love that you are in love with this book because it's it does say it all it's very very simple and yet it's not simple to a mind that's complicated with a mistaken identity and really believes that this world exists and I remember I was the queen of it's all an illusion before I met David. And then I stopped saying it because I, it, was, it was like a spiritual bypass, you know, with spiritual pink paint. Oh, that's not real, so I don't need to pay attention to that. When inside, deep inside, I was pushing down all the darkness and all the reactions. And that's what's beautiful about our community. Bring the, bring the reactions to the altar because that's the easier way. That's the way in which the mind can be purified. Because without that, then you're just managing. It's almost like you become a really good manager of awakening, you know? And, and yet there's, and, and for a minute you feel some sort of neutrality or relief. Oh, okay, this must be it. But then it's not it, you know? So it's a non compromising approach. This purpose is the only choice. Once you get to the, to the realization, something in the mind that says purpose is the only choice for me, then you tumble down the rabbit hole, you know. And, and what's so beautiful is Jesus says, yes, there's going to be this and that, and there's going to be confusion and disorientation. And well, that's good to know. You know, I always felt like, oh, good, I'm disoriented. <sighs> well, that's good. That, that means <laughs> something's happening, you know. <laughs> but it's so beautiful, you know, and I think that the shift... That you're, that you're perceiving is your own shift, and and it's not actually happening. Like it's not actually happening out there. Yeah, you know. And when you start to, you know, you don't have to get too complicated about this. It's like forgiveness is the key to happiness. Okay, so how do I how do I practice? How do I practically go about this in a way that's committed, that 
that has results that you can experience so that you're not just spouting concepts about spirituality. You know, there's so much stuff on the internet. You just click a button and, you know, you've got all these amazing teachings and all these teachers and all that, you know, it's just, it's everywhere, right? And then that has become the problem <laughs> in a way, because then it's like you're, you're looking for a golden needle inside of, the, inside of this haystack of blah, blah, blah about spirituality. And that's where the prayer of your heart, you will get what you want. If you want a watered down version, you'll get that. It's fine. It's fine. It's, I'm not saying there's a problem with that. But I think, you know, just looking into your eyes and knowing what you have done and knowing the steps that you have taken, which I honor completely, that we're not, we're not, it's not a casual endeavor at living, at living miracles, right? And it's because that's, because we're, we're, we're those cliff jumpers, you know, and, and, and then we get to see that, that we've been held all along, that, you know, it is a journey without distance, and it is chop wood, carry water, it, it, those things are true, but you know, when you're going through that deep unwinding uh, and, and you're, you're coming to your senses, so to speak, of purpose is the only choice, forgiveness is the only choice in every situation, then there starts to be such an, it starts to be an inspiring situation in the mind. It was for me, like, okay, if I know I'm going into this meeting and my buttons are going to get pushed or I have some fear about some encounter with somebody, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to prepare my mind to practice forgiveness and I'm going to walk in, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to be in this internal dialogue the whole time with call it what you will, higher self, Holy Spirit, higher mind, the light, the truth in your mind. And then you go in all prepared and you sit down and you watch where yeah, things start to contract or the heart starts to shed or the alien of jealousy comes up or whatever it is. But you're, you've, you've given yourself the spaciousness in mind to prepare to practice forgiveness. And I think that's one of the major things that helped uh, me shift into a more peaceful place with this path. Because I was always feeling like I was getting hit all the time. You know, torpedo, torpedo. Well, I was. You know, I always say you just get... Brrr, the torpedo comes until you're so holy that you're just whole. Right? It's like it blows all the self-concept away. But if you're always just in reaction, then that's not it either. Yes, we have to let those reactions up, but we have to really see that anything, anything that disturbs our peace of mind, we have attached to an illusion. Jesus says it in The Course in Miracles. So am I going to believe him or I'm going to hang on to thinking I'm right about something? Mm -hmm. You know, can you, can you let go of being right in a situation? Well, I'll tell you, it's complete freedom when you can sit there and go, oh, I feel my rightness. I feel my temptation to sleep coming up. I want to attack because we're addicted or addicted to the attack, right? It makes us feel yeah. oh, something, like we're something. At least yeah. we're something. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I remember one time in prayer I heard, and I don't hear voices very often, but I heard, are you willing to be ordinary when I was having a lot of comparison thoughts? You know, oh, look what they're doing. Oh, they're doing so much better than me, blah, 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 you know. And I sat with that and I said, yes, I'm willing to be ordinary, you know, because I always thought it would just look a certain way. I had to let go. I had to let go on a very deep level of how this is going to look from how it looks as a mystic, you know, sitting in a dark cave. And that's why I was always wanting to go to the monastery, you know, it's like, no, no, I don't want to do all that other stuff. And I think it was Kirsten one time said to me, you know, those chipmunks in the canyon aren't going to wake you up. <laughs> but yeah, but your but your projection on your brother is going to mm -hmm. show you what needs to be lifted up and forgiven. So, purpose is the only choice if you're serious about awakening, and it and it doesn't mean that you have to take gigantic steps or do anything drastic. It just means start there if that's your prayer. Yeah. But you have to be very, you know, honest with yourself. Yeah, and if there are things in the world you still want to play with and, and then play with them do it you mm -hmm. know i was i had done everything in my mind it's like done it all yeah you know yeah
Yeah, I had asked, I remember asking for, I said, I want my life to be an adventure mm. when I was in college. And it was. You know, I, I picked up the course pretty early, right around 77, and it was like, okay, well, that, this, took, this takes me so far. But that's, I, I wasn't willing to completely, well, I didn't get it completely mm. until I heard David. And I, I was into it by 30 some years by that time, and it was like, mm. Whoa. Yeah, it's a this bit of a game changer. Guy got it. Yeah. So, and then 10 days later, he showed up in Sedona, and, and, and that's yeah, when yeah. I met you just yeah, yeah. after that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just yeah. Not shortly it's a very that. powerful symbol of clarity. And, um, you know, friends of mine from my past would say, Why did you, why are you following David? And I was like, I'm not following a person, yeah. you know. I'm following my heart, and it's saying, you know, I've been praying for depth, I've been praying for awakening, and then this shows up, so how can I, exactly. you know, that would be like refusing to receive the answer to a prayer, but, but literally there was, for some reason, even though I had so much to go through, I just didn't see David as outside of me. I never, never had any guru worship, worship with him or anything yeah. like that. In fact, I had a tremendous amount of judgment. But there was something about him that I completely trusted at the same yeah. time. And then, of course, you know, you hit the wall with that, too, and that has to shatter, yeah. you know, because it's, it, you know, it's a trick. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm so grateful for, uh, I think it's the purity of the prayer, you know. Anybody who has a, a pure heart and, a, and a, an intention for coming home, you know, because I think that's what it was for me. It's like... I gotta get out of here. I gotta go home, and 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 that's why I wanted to skip steps because I just wanted to negate form and the illusion, you know. Yeah. And so this was shown to me that, you know, patience. You're gonna have to do a little bit of work. You're gonna have to let some of that stuff that's been so pushed down that you're not even aware to come to the surface. But I'll I'll hold your hand, and many people will hold your hand and take you through. So. I just have, um, yeah, it's like such a deep uh, abiding uh, gratitude for the answer to my prayer to come into this rest now to, you know, and, and anybody that knows Living Miracles knows that we have a hundred things going on at one time, right? And, I, and my thing is silence. So it's like, can I really do this? Can I really do this? Yes, yes, yes. David totally supports the monastery for the purpose that it's it's kind of shifting into because it's been used for many, many years for many different things <clears throat> and to do uh, silent retreats and give people the opportunity to come in and just be without teachings, without anything, just to be. And I, I guess if, if I could extend any sort of uh, message that was helpful for me, it's got to be prayer. If you don't have that inner dialogue uh, connecting with the light and the truth in your own mind to show you how to forgive, to show you how to be humble, to show, you know, the ego has, the, there's a humiliation of the ego that happens on this pathway. You can't get around it. But to be able to, to, to have such a, a guidebook with, with the Course of Miracles and then the clarity of the teachings of David, um, you know, people will ask me questions and stuff. I just send them links to David's teachings. I, I let David, yeah. I mean, it's like it's yeah. just so pure and clear. And yeah. and so, um, yeah, this this little book, it's been around for a long, long time. It was black and white at one point. Yeah, but this is this is really it's all in there. Yeah, and it answers every single question because, you know, when I first started studying the course, I didn't know what it was saying. <laughs> I loved it, but I didn't. I loved it with my heart, but I didn't know what it was saying. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. And so it, it, these these things are helpful. And I was. It's a self study, so I wasn't going to let any other books or teachers. And that was 25 years ago. You know, Marianne Williamson had written a book, but I wouldn't read it because no, 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 no. This is a self study. I actually read it, and it opened me up mm. to to actually beginning to understand what uh, what the book was actually saying, mm. which was wonderful. But. Um, yeah, I think that it's a, it's a deep journey, and it works, 
I think if anything, if I have anything at all to say, is that forgiveness is the key to happiness. And that if you do what the Course of Miracles trains us to do, and it's mind training, boy, because we are wild horses. Yeah. Our minds are completely confused, delusional, psychotic. So we have to come out of that and see that we're not any of that. We're not any of that, you know. And how beautiful to be able to stand, you know, like there, there's that Bible quote, which I won't give it any, I won't say it correctly, but about I walk through the shadow, the, the shadow of death, and I fear no evil. It's like, what is the first part of the Course of Miracles? Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing yeah, unreal yeah, exists. exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That's what forgiveness will take you to. It's not about having, a, you know, the form matching up to the happy la-la life. Who knows what, what you might have to dream through. But you won't be at effect of that dream. Jesus went to the cross, not saying, you guys are off. You shouldn't be treating me this way. You know, it, he had transcended. And we're here to transcend. We're not messing around with this. We're here to transcend it all. You know, this isn't the watered down version. So it's very, very profound and deep and beautiful. And I, when you asked me to, to come on uh, this show, I, I was very, you know, first, first was very reluctant. Like, I don't, I don't really want to do that. But there, but there was an honoring, Dan, that I have for you. And that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, with a call in their heart. I mean, the prayer, it, the prayer of the heart is the same prayer. That's where there's oneness is inside of that. That's why I can recognize myself in you, because that's where we are the same. Nothing else. Our personalities are going to do what they do. Who cares? Who cares what our personalities do? I want to see the Christ in you. I want to see the truth in you because I like the experience of that much better than sitting around judging your surface personality, which has nothing to do with anything, has nothing to do with who you are. Let it go. Let your brother off the hook. See that depth and that beauty. And abide in that. <laughs> I mean, that's the only choice. Why would you choose the other? Unless you just want to suffer, which, you know, we do want to do that for a while yeah. until we don't. Yeah. The don't. attraction to guilt is getting less and less attractive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. So, thank you. I really uh, appreciate thank this Thank you. And thank you, everyone. We'll yeah. be back in another week. <laughs>